is Trivia for Kids, where it's not just for adults anymore. Hey, everybody! Hi! We're back! And we're so excited to be back, right? Yes! I'm Casey. And I'm Ren. And this is episode 53 of... Uh, kids, baking championship. <laughs> Did you forget the name of our podcast uh, already? No. Trivia for kids. Oh yeah. So we took a big break from recording, didn't we? Probably two months. A couple yes. of months. Yep. We had a really busy start to the year, and we just needed just needed some time. Just needed a little break. But now, here we are. Back in the microphone booth. What do you think? I love it. Are you excited to be back? Yes. But now that we're back, though, we do have a big favor to ask of everybody. If you could please, please spread the word about our podcast to your friends, your neighbors, your teachers, your classmates, your aunts, your great uncle, your second cousins once removed, your backyard neighbors, two houses down, then the blue house. We would really appreciate it. And if you also would take the time to give us a five-star review, that would be so super helpful because we really want to continue this podcast and we really want to be with you every week. But in order to keep doing that, we really need your help to spread the word. Right, Ren? Yes. So what have you been up to this year since we haven't given anyone an update since Christmas? Um, sports and piano. Yeah, and going to school every day. Mm -hmm. Except what's been a little different about this this winter? You've had so many snow days from school. I Last week alone, you had President's Day off, and then you had two snow days. So we have spent a lot of time together inside, haven't we? Uh-huh. We are ready for spring. Yes, we are. Very much so. Should we get ready for the joke of the week here? Yes, please. So this joke is brought to us from a family that has four kids, Nolan, Josephine, Rory, and Morgan. What do you call a sad strawberry? What? A blueberry. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great joke. Thanks, kids. All right, Ren. What we've been waiting for for two months, the start of the trivia. Four kids. Here's how the show works. Trivia for Kids consists of five rounds with seven questions each. We will announce the answers at the end of each round. Each new round will have a different category. After the fifth round, we will have the final exam, which will test you on the toughest questions we have covered in the previous rounds. Everyone ready? Let's get started. Round number one. The category is alligators and crocodiles. This category idea comes from Nolan. Thank you, Nolan. Question one. Within 10, how many teeth does the average alligator have in its mouth? Question two. About how many years ago did alligators first appear on Earth? 17 million, 37 million, or 57 million years ago? Question three. What happens to an alligator egg if it is exposed to temperatures above 93 degrees Fahrenheit? Question four, how long can an American alligator stay underwater? Question five, for every 1,000 crocodile eggs laid, what percent will reach five years old?
Question six, true or false? All crocodiles are actually alligators. Question seven, how long can an alligator survive without eating? And now the answers to round one. Question one, within 10, how many teeth does the average alligator have in its mouth? 74 to 80 teeth. Alligators have about 74 to 80 teeth in their mouths at any one time. You can't really be more accurate than that because they're constantly losing and wearing teeth down. Lost teeth will be replaced and an alligator will go through 2,000 to 3,000 teeth in their lifetime. What? That's a lot of teeth. And you know what's ironic? You just got back from the orthodontist. That's true. <laughs> Question two, about how many years ago did alligators first appear on Earth? 17 million, 37 million, or 57 million years ago? 37 million years ago. How do they know that? Uh... That's what I can't figure out. Like, how scientists can count back 37 million years ago just from this one piece of uh, bone. Yeah, I don't know. It's impressive though. Very. Question three, what happens to an alligator egg if it is exposed to temperatures above 93 degrees Fahrenheit? It will be a boy. At temperatures above 93 degrees Fahrenheit or 34 degrees Celsius, an alligator egg will be born as a male. When the temperature stays below 86 degrees Fahrenheit or 30 degrees Celsius, it will be born a female. If it stays in the range between those two temperatures, it could go either way. Whoa. Cool, huh? Uh-huh. I wish that I could just pick that like, I want my kid to be a boy. So I'm going to heat up my stomach. <laughs> Question four. How long can an American alligator stay underwater? Up to two hours. Though it's not normal for an alligator to do so all the time, they can spend upwards of two hours submerged underwater. An alligator is capable of slowing its heart rate to a mere two to three beats per minute to pull this off. Normally, however, they won't stay submerged for much more than 15 minutes. Isn't that crazy that they have the power to slow down their heart? Yes. Like two beats a minute, that's very, very slow. It just like bump in the next 30 seconds. 30 seconds. <laughs> bump. Question five. For every 1,000 crocodile eggs laid, what percent will reach five years old? One percent. And how much is one percent of 1,000? Uh, one, ten. Ten. Only 10 crocodiles out of a 1,000. Crocodile infant mortality is no joke, and very few hatchlings make it to maturity. It is estimated that only 1% of every 1,000 eggs will even make it to 5 years old. And of that number, only about half make it to see 6 years old. Aww, sad. Oh, that's sad! Question 6. True or false? All crocodiles are actually alligators. False. In fact, even though crocodiles and alligators look a lot alike, they're actually very distantly related. Their last common ancestor was 65 million years in the past. Whoa. Isn't that funny that they look so much alike, but they're not even closely related? Question seven. How long can an alligator survive without eating? Two to three years. Alligators can go a few years without eating, but that doesn't mean their reputation as one of nature's most dangerous predators isn't well deserved. Why can they go so long between meals? It's because alligators are cold blooded and store extra calories in fat deposits at the base of their tails. 
they can live off these fat reserves for a few years before going on the prowl again. First of all, you. Second of all, what? Yeah, I would have never guessed that. I'm not even able to do it through one lunchtime. <laughs> Me neither. Round number two. The category is outer space. A big thanks to listener Theo for this category idea. Thanks, Theo. Question one. Why isn't it possible to walk on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune? Question two. What is the only planet not named after a god? Question three. What is at the center of the Milky Way galaxy? Question four. How many planets have rings around them? Question five. What is any human-made object called that is stuck orbiting Earth? Question six. Which is the oldest planet in our solar system? Question seven. Which planet spins backward relative to the others? And now the answers to round two. Question one, why isn't it possible to walk on Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, or Neptune? Because they don't have solid surfaces. I did not know this. I didn't know that it's crazy to think. It's crazy for me to think that like you can look at a picture of Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, and they're like a perfect ball like Earth, but they're completely made out of gas. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. Question two, what is the only planet not named after a god? Earth. Earth, yep. Question three, what is at the center of the Milky Way galaxy? A black hole. Dun, dun, dun. There are a lot of myths about a black hole because no one's ever came out of that alive. Hmm. I don't know a lot about black holes. Neither do I. Just that I don't ever want to go in one. Yeah. <laughs> Question four, how many planets have rings around them? Four. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune. So yeah, the four planets that you can't walk on are also the four planets that have rings around them. And they are actually called giant gas planets. Huh. Question five. What is any human-made object called that is stuck orbiting Earth? Space junk. Space junk. Based on statistical models produced by ESA's Space Debris Office, it is estimated that there are 36,500 objects larger than 10 centimeters, 1 million objects between 1 and 10 centimeters, and an extraordinary 130 million objects between 1 millimeter and 1 centimeter of space junk floating in Earth's orbit. You have that on the test and you'll be like, hmm, do I think I can remember this? <laughs> well, it's just basically saying there's a lot of space junk. Yeah. Question six, which is the oldest planet in our solar system? Jupiter. Also the largest planet. Also has rings. Also made of gas. Question seven, which planet spins backward relative to the others? 
Venus. Venus. I think that is the most inhospitable planet in the solar system. It's, it's the hottest, and it's made out of like all these dangerous gases, and it spins backward. Venus is like a rogue planet. Yeah, I when I when I think of all the planets, the first thing that never that comes up to my mind is never ever ever Venus. I always think of like Jupiter or Neptune or something like that, huh. and never Venus. Poor thing. <laughs> Poor Venus. <laughs> Round number three. The category is cryptids. This interesting category idea comes from listener River. Thanks, River. And if you're like me and have no idea what a cryptid is, it is an animal that has been claimed to exist but never proven to exist. Question one. This underwater creature thought to resemble a dinosaur is maybe the most famous cryptid in the world. It's been photographed numerous times, but never conclusively. It gets its distinctive name from its Scottish heritage. Question two. What legendary sea beast reportedly attacked ships with its massive tentacles? Question three. What beast was originally a resident of the vast forests of the Pacific Northwest, but variations have popped up all over the place? Question four. What Himalayan primate became well known beginning in the 1920s and is sometimes called the abominable snowman. It's mostly known for leaving massive footprints in the snow. Question five, what is the national animal of Scotland? Question six. The translation of this cryptid's name means big tooth. It is a giant shark that most people believe lived in prehistoric times, but is extinct now. Question seven. What is a person called who searches for and studies unknown, legendary, or extinct animals whose present existence is disputed or unsubstantiated, particularly those popular in folklore. And now the answers to round three. So, Ren, let me ask you, have you ever heard of a cryptid? Uh, no. Do you have any idea what it is? No. Okay. Well, I'll give you the definition again. It is an animal that has been claimed to exist, but never proven to exist. Oh. So you try to get these right. I know you haven't seen these questions. You try to answer them without me showing you what it is, okay? Like a jackalope. Like a jackalope. Why didn't I put, why didn't I put that as one of these? Oh, man. That was a good one. Where were you when I was writing questions? Uh, anyway, question one. This underwater creature, thought to resemble a dinosaur, is maybe the most famous cryptid in the world. It has been photographed numerous times, but never conclusively. It gets its distinctive name from its Scottish heritage. The Loch Ness Monster? The Loch Ness Monster! Yay! I got the it. Loch Ness Monster, or Nessie, has been hunted for more than a hundred years with cameras, sonar, rifles, and even Google Maps. It remains elusive. So you'd heard of the Loch Ness Monster. Uh -huh. It's kind of funny how people have claimed to see it, but no one can find it. Question two. What legendary sea beast reportedly attacked ships with its massive tentacles? Kraken? A Kraken! Woo! 
Numerous dead specimens were collected in the 20th century, typically caught in fishing nets or washed ashore. Living adults were eventually photographed and filmed, ultimately removing this animal from the ranks of true cryptids. It turns out a kraken is actually just a giant squid. Yeah, I was going to say, it's just an octopus or squid. Yep. Question three. What beast was originally a resident of the vast forests of the Pacific Northwest? But variations have popped up all over the place. I was estimating that this was going to be in this one. I am obviously guessing Bigfoot. Bigfoot. And it also goes by the name Sasquatch. Oh, yeah, Sasquatch. Do you think Bigfoot is real? Uh, no. No? I don't think so either. I think they would have found it by now if he was yeah. real. It's probably like a bearish monkey thingamajig or something that they just came up with if they saw a really big monkey. Bear. That, yeah, bear. I don't bear. think there's monkeys in the Pacific Northwest. Oh, well. Question four. What Himalayan primate became well-known beginning in the 1920s and is sometimes called the abominable snowman? It's mostly known for leaving massive footprints in the snow. Yeti? Yeti! Woo! Also the name of coolers and glasses and cups yeah. and stuff like that. Question five. What is the national animal of Scotland? I keep on thinking of St. Patrick, but that is definitely not an animal. It's the unicorn. Oh, yeah. Unicorns. National animal of Scotland. Question six. The translation of this cryptid's name means big tooth. It is a giant shark that most people believe lived in prehistoric times, but is extinct now. Uh... Brooks loves them. Megalodon! Oh, yeah! I just thought it was a cool question because Brooks talks about megalodons all the time, so I, I was... put it in here. I always thought that a megalodon was a land animal. Nope, a giant massive shark. Oh, well that's why I didn't get it. <laughs> Question seven. What is a person called who searches for and studies unknown legendary or extinct animals whose present existence is disputed, particularly those popular in folklore? A cryptozoolog... A cryptozoolog... Yes. A cryptozoologist. Oh. So a person who close. studies or tries to find Bigfoot is called a cryptozoologist. Interesting. Like, your friend asks you, what are you? And then you say, I'm a cryptozoologist. I look for Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. Round number four. The category is cereal. Thank you, Nico, for this idea. Thanks, Nico. Question one. Who was the first athlete to make 18 appearances on the Wheaties box? Question two. Which cereal has three elves as mascots, one of which wears a chef's hat? Question three. What is the name of the bird mascot for Fruit Loops? Question four. What breakfast cereal comes in rice, corn, and wheat and is used to make a snack mix? Question five. Apple Jack cereal is flavored to taste like apples and which spice? Question six. Which breakfast cereal mascot has eyebrows that are a part of his hat? Question seven. What cereal with a vampire mascot is only available for a few months during the fall? A, 
And now the round four answers. Question one, who was the first athlete to make 18 appearances on the Wheaties box? Michael Jordan. Obviously, the basketball goat would be on there the most. Yeah. Question two, which cereal has three elves as mascots, one of which wears a chef's hat? Rice Krispies. And do you know what the three elves' names are? Boom, Crackle, and Pop? Close. Snap, Crackle, and oh. Pop. <sighs> Question three. What is the name of the bird mascot for Fruit Loops? Toucan Sam. And he, when I was a kid, the commercials, he always said, follow your nose. <laughs> and then he would like fly away to the Fruit Loops land. Question four. What breakfast cereal comes in rice, corn, and wheat and is also used in snack mix? Checks. Oh man, we love Chex Mix. Yeah, but you never get it. I don't make it very often, or I don't buy it very often, but we do love it. I buy it when it's on sale. We've talked about how cheap I am. You buy anything when it's on sale. <laughs> Question five. Apple Jack's cereal is flavored to taste like apples and which spice? Cinnamon. Ren, do you like cinnamon? Uh... And sugar, yes. With sugar, but plain you don't like cinnamon, do you? Yeah. Question six. Which breakfast cereal mascot has eyebrows that are a part of his hat? Captain Crunch. Yep. So if you look at a picture of Captain Crunch, his eyebrows, like if he took his hat off, his eyebrows would go with his hat. Do you remember what Captain Crunch's first name is? Uh, no. Horatio! Oh, yeah. Was that like messed up? Was that like an accident, do you think? Or do you think that they actually did it to take off his eyebrows? Oh, I don't know. That's I don't know why. Maybe it's just a little like fun fact. Question seven. What cereal with a vampire mascot is only available for a few months during the fall? Count Chocula. Count Chocula. I've never had that. There's three kinds of Halloween cereals that come out. Count Chocula, Booberry, that has like a blue mummy on it, and Frankenberry, which has like a red Frankenstein looking monster guy on it. And I don't usually buy them. They were popular when I was a kid and they're back now, but I don't think I've ever bought them. Huh. I wonder if they're good. I think they have marshmallows in them, so probably. Every cereal with marshmallows tastes good, right? Literally, my favorite cereal is Fruit Loops and marshmallows. Right. If you could just dump sugar into your mouth, you would be good. Yeah. Round number five. The category is music. A big thanks to listener Isla for the category idea and questions. Thank you, Isla. Question one. Within five, how many pieces of wood does it take to make a violin? Question two, true or false? Music can help plants grow. Question three, who wrote the song Bad Guy? Question four. Which member of the Beatles could read and write music? John, Paul, George, or Ringo? Question five. What is the most popular children's song of all time? Question six. What type of musical instrument does Lizzo play? Question seven. Beethoven is associated with which type of music?
And now the answers to round five. Question one. Within five, how many pieces of wood does it take to make a violin? About 70. Question two. True or false? Music can help plants grow. True. Yeah, it is true. Scientists did a study and music can help plants grow. I don't know what kind of music, but pretty cool. Question three. Who wrote the song, Bad Guy? Billie Eilish. So yeah, she sings the song and she wrote it. Huh. Duh. Do 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 do. Question four. Which member of the Beatles could read and write music? John, Paul, George, or Ringo? Trick question. None of them could. Yeah, sorry. That's a trick question. None of the Beatles could read music. One of the most popular rock bands of all time didn't know how to read or write music, even though they played and wrote most of their own songs. Whoa. Isn't that cool? Yes, that you know would what be I, very frustrating. You know what else is cool? What? A guy named Ringo. <laughs> that is like the coolest drummer name there ever could be. Ringo. <laughs> I should have thought of that when we had Brooks. What? Question five. What is the most popular children's song of all time? Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star. Yes. And Twinkle, Twinkle, Little Star's tune has two, well, at least two that I can think of, other songs that go along to it. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and... Uh, ba, 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 Black ba. Sheep, Have You Any Wool. I can never remember the whole song of Ba, Ba, Black Sheep, Have You Any Wool, Yes Sir, Yes Sir, Three Packs Wool. I can never remember the whole song. But you know the tune because of Twinkle, 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 Twinkle Little, Little Star. Star. Question six. What type of musical instrument does Lizzo play? The flute. Yeah. She's like an accomplished flautist. Whoa. She even recently got to play a really historic glass flute. What? Right? Isn't that cool? I also saw on Sesame Street she got to play a cookie flute. And then Cookie Monster ate it. <laughs> Imagine if she dropped that. <laughs> oh my goodness. Hopefully she was standing on a mattress or something. Just yeah. in case. Question seven. Beethoven is associated with which type of music? Classical. Do you like classical music? Um, I don't really think... When I, when I like a song, I don't really think of like... Mm, this must be rock or something like that. You just like it or you don't? Yeah. And now it's time for the final exam. Now remember, you've heard these questions in the previous rounds, but these were the hardest ones we've had. So use your memory and try to think back to what the answers are. Question number one. How many teeth does the average alligator have in its mouth? 74 to 80. Question two. What is the only planet not named after a god? Earth. Question three. What is the national animal of Scotland? The unicorn. Question four. Who was the first athlete to make 18 appearances on the Wheaties box? Michael Jordan. Question five. Within five, how many pieces of wood does it take to make a violin? About 70. Question six. How long can an alligator survive without eating? Two to three years. Question seven. What is at the center of the Milky Way galaxy? A black hole. We're done. Woo! It feels kind of weird to be doing this again, doesn't it? It does. The break was nice, but... 
It's fun to be learning about stuff again and hanging out with you, Ren. It is. Well, thank you guys for listening. Thank you so much. Have a great week and we'll talk to you soon. Bye. Please follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Trivia for Kids Podcast. And if you have a question idea or even an entire category, please email us at trivia for kids podcast at gmail.com.